tattoo chooses you, God fights for you. He's with you and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. Hello and good evening, good morning, good night, good tomorrow, wherever you may be on the surface of the earth. Welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come your way. I don't take these moments lightly at all because destiny moments are times that you might not recognize. One thing I know about our God is that he works his greatest things in the ordinariness of our day. So thank you again through the miracle of technology we are live on Facebook. We are live on, on YouTube. Please like us, subscribe, anything you do, but whatever you do, share. Welcome, welcome, welcome today. Episode number 56, the mentor and the prodigy, the fifth part, episode number 56. For 56 episodes, we've been distilling wisdom from above, and I hope that you become a better person. Listen, regardless of whatever the week may have thrown at you, so long as there's a heartbeat in your chest and there's breath in your nostrils, there's still hope. I still believe in a place called tomorrow. Don't give up, my friend. Don't give up. It's going to be okay. The mentor and the prodigy is going to be amazing tonight. And I have a great prodigy here today. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be good. But whilst we are here, let me welcome a few of our folk. Hey, welcome, welcome, Abigail. Abigail Toku from Kerry South Ghana. Good evening to you. Mary Odum, how have you been? Mary Odum, God bless you. God bless you. Sela, Sela Jaba, Abba, God bless you so much. Nana Ajua Kunedu, good evening to you too. Ohine Boateng is watching us from Loganville. God bless you. Ransford Sampene, good evening to you too. From Ghana, great man of God, Kwabna Jeff, man of God, God bless you. Hey, Grace, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Virginia, thank you. In Virginia, Grace Pencil, God richly bless you. The Honorable None anymore. God bless you too. One and only shepherd, Kwesi Buadum. Listen, it's rolling. Dr. Mary of Ajimai, God bless you. Our uh, one and only Yvonne Hotter. You are all very welcome. Patricia and Chroma, thank you. Ebi Bonsuibi, God bless you so much. Raymond, yes, you call that destiny, destiny moments may not be recognized. It's so true. You know, I believe that in the terrain that Moses found himself in in those days, there were many bushes that were catching fire. Because the place was desert, it was tender dry. So bushes catching fire was nothing new. It was not a phenomenon. But Moses took notice of one particular bush that had been burning maybe for days and yet was not consumed. And the book says that he said, I'll turn aside and see this. And when he turned aside, that was his destiny moment. I am sure many, many people saw some stars in the, in the sky, shepherds and everything. They saw, they saw, they saw all kinds of stars. But they noticed that there was one that was different. And when they noticed it, they got the news that the Messiah has been born. From the Republic of Virginia, Pastor David, Jehu, God bless you so much. Suzanne Odom, Suzanne, God bless you so much from northwest of, of, of Atlanta. Abba, Abba, God bless you. We're looking forward to see you next week for ISI. Listen, whilst we are there, I'm going to put the, the flyer up there for ISI. This is an epic meeting that is coming up. You cannot afford to miss it. Please let me tell you something. 
The greatest investment that you can ever make is to invest in yourself. Don't forget that. The greatest investment that you can ever make is to invest in yourself. Why do I say that? Because wherever you go, you carry your whole self there. You cannot, you cannot outsource your investing in yourself. You cannot delegate it to somebody. You've got to do it yourself. When you get better, things around you get better. Don't forget that. And sometimes the reason why some people are the way they are is because they are cheap. Take some money and spend some time, spend energy, spend travel, spend gas, and register for this right there on the flyer. Please, some are asking about the day sessions because you cannot be here in person. Please still go ahead and register. Once you register, we'll send you a link. We'll send you a link, and the link works on only one, one, one device. So you cannot share it for, to a thousand people. It works on only one device. So let me warn you so that you can you can join in the day sessions. We've got my great friend Zenzo Matoga, Dr. Vesa Otabel, Dr. Samchan, Dr. Francis Miles. It's just going to be epic. And yours truly is also going to be there. And on Saturday morning, listen, if you are into youth, if you are a young person, and anybody below 70, you are young, it's Youth on Fire with Zenzo Matoga. Please believe me when I tell you, this man is an authority, the whole of the... North, north, northeast of northeast of America, you know, all around the East Coast, New England. I mean, I've been in meetings with him, and this man just blew me out of the water, and I said, you've got to come to Atlanta. So 9.30 on Saturday morning, July 23rd, for just about an hour, an hour and a half, it's free. Just come in and just be a part. That is my gift to you. And listen, it's out there. If you want to register, Deborah has put it there for ISI. Just go to advancelife.org. There's a registration page. It's very, very easy. It's user-friendly. Mabina Francisca Odoi, God bless you. God bless you. Michelle Ray is telling us, please share, family share. Let's do that. Akosu Ajima is also telling us to share. Yes, yes, yes. Shepherd says that tonight is very special to me. Expectations are high. Please don't put pressure on me, my son. We, we're going to get there. Christiana, hello. Christiana Boatin, God bless you. Hey, Wisdom Bank, Alex Boatin, all the way from the city of London, a life family church. Good evening to you. In God's blessing, God richly bless you. Shakuna, Shakuna, we have missed you. I hope you and the girls are doing very well. From Kerry South, Ghana, the most reverend Mani Japon. God bless you. Mami Tebua says, please share and be blessed. Mary Sweet, Mary, God bless you. Ah, Pastor Asma says, share one, share two, share three, please share four. That's for emphasis. Don't, don't miss that. It's going to be awesome tonight. We're going to learn a few things. The mentor and the protege, I'm sure you and I have been learning. In just two minutes, Actually, we've started already, so let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. People, listen, get better. Sometimes, listen, not sometimes, all the times, it's better to invest in yourself than to invest in peripheries. Invest in your brains before you invest in your shoes. Are you hearing me? Man of God, one of God. The message in your heart must cost more than the briefcase you hold in your hands. It's very important. Do that, do that, do that. Eric Obin, Eric, God bless you. Eric has this wonderful program on in the mornings, wonderful programs in the mornings. Um, my call, my, my call is all. Please, uh, you can tune into that. We'll put it out there for you one day. And uh, Charles Olives, prophet, young prophet, God bless you. Please, we are on YouTube. Frank Ofoswapia, the official. Frank Ofoswapia, the official. Um, YouTube is Frank Ofoswapia, the official. Please do that. Then on, on Facebook is the ambassador of hope. Yes, Rockefeller, you are here again, all the way from Jamestown, Accra, Ghana. God bless you for coming up. Offense of my missions is in the house. God bless you, Offense of my missions. All the way from Toronto, Canada. Nana Kunadu Brefo, God bless you. Nana Ponsa says, share, share, share. Please, let's share. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Gabriela, God bless you too. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Just invest in yourself. Listen, we've been on this interesting journey. We're going to talk for just a few minutes. And I'm going to bring one of the great prodigies, a man that is doing amazing, and not only in the city of Atlanta, but touching the world in person and through the media, through media. It's going to be amazing. We're going to ask questions. We're going to have a discussion. We are going to talk. But, you know, if you've been following us, if today is your first time, welcome, and I hope you never go back. But if, if you're a regular, welcome again. We've been on this interesting journey. It's a discovery, a journey of learning, a journey of getting better. And we've been looking at one of the surest methods of leadership continuity. Leadership continu continuity, and that is mentoring. We have established that mentoring is as old as human civilization. From the pages of eternal scripture, 
through the halls of history, whether it is in politics or in the military, in sports, in business, wherever it is, mentoring is always present. The great patriarch Abraham was mentored by Jethro. Moses was, I beg your pardon, M Moses was mentored by Jethro. Somebody has to mentor somebody. Somebody has to help you. You know, Moses was a man that walked with God. He dined face to face with God. He did amazing miracles on, on, on the Egyptian army. And yet he needed somebody to teach him delegation. He needed somebody to teach him how to put systems in order so that he will avoid eminent burnout. Somebody needs somebody. Somebody has to hold your hand. Somebody has to show you the ropes. Somebody has to show you secrets. Somebody has to give their expertise, their experience, their connections to you to make you better than they were. Even in the jungles and the plains of Africa, during hunts, we see, we see, we see mentoring. I think I've told this story before that I heard from Dr. Mars Morrow about watching a hunt in one of the safaris that he went in Southern Africa. How when it was time for the lions to hunt, a lioness took two of her calves and placed them at a vantage point where they could see the kill. And was wondering why. And then he realized that right in front of him was a mentoring in motion. The mother lion, the lioness, wanted the leather calves to see how the hunt is done. Blood, gore, everything left nothing behind. And we have explored many aspects of this, of this lesson. So I'm not going to just go into all, all of these things. We need a lot of time to talk and to converse and to do things. So please go back and check the previous episodes. I've left them there. So the question is, what is mentoring? Who is a mentor? I told you from the beginning that the, the word mentor, mentoring comes from the Greeks about a man who was, Telemachus, who, who was left in the hands of a man called Mentor to be looked after because his father was going off to war. And he, he taught the guy, raised the guy to become a real man. And that is where mentoring came from. So what is mentoring? What is mentoring? I'm going to put it out there for you. When we say mentoring, it's when an older, experienced person imparts his or her personal strengths. Somebody needs your strength. Somebody needs your strength. Don't waste it. Give it to somebody. Your resources, your wisdom, your experiences, and your connections to help a protege, a younger person, whatever, reach their full potential. Hear me. Most of the things that God has given to you is not for you. That is life. Most of the things that God has given to you is not for you. And listen to me again. Whatever God has not given to you is given to somebody else. Whatever you desire is in, somebody, is in somebody's heart. And so that is why the mentor and the protege experience becomes very necessary. And so I go to the next question, why must we mentor? Why must we mentor? I'll give you some four quick reasons why there must be mentoring. Number one, mentoring is the seed that we plant for future generations. Mentoring is the seed that we plant for future generations. Do you realize that whenever you take a little seed, an acorn or whatever, within the seed is a tree. Within that seed is a forest. Never forget that. So a seed has unlimited potential to do great things. In the same way, when you mentor somebody, it's a seed for future generations. That is why you must live full and die empty and make sure that you find people, young men and young women, and pour your lives to them. Please hear me. Don't fight the next generation. Don't kill them. Don't be jealous about them. Don't feel, don't feel insecure about them. You can't stop a move of God. Find somebody and pour your life in. Grow old and sit back and watch the young grow and do amazing things and take some of the glory. Mentoring is a seed that we plant for future generations. Number two, mentoring ensures continuity. You know, when I was in grad school many years ago, my dissertation uh, had to do with what, what I considered to be something very, very disconcerting for me. I realized that an older generation was passing and a newer generation was there, but there was a gap. So my dissertation was to find ways to bridge that gap so that there'll be a seamless transition from one generation that is going off to the next. What I realized is that there's been too much agitation today because when you stand at the, at the beach and you watch the waves, you realize that the greatest threat to the incoming wave is the outgoing wave. Let it not be like that. Number four, mentoring 
shortens your learning curve. Mentoring shortens your learning curve. You learn through other people's pain. You learn through your mentor's experience. Because sometimes it's better. In fact, a lot of times it's better to learn from somebody's pain than your own pain. Because what if you don't survive your own pain? So it's important. And, and finally, and that is by no means exhaustive, it helps you to build legacies. What is the point in being a success and there are no successes? Think about it. The greatest mentor said that the things that I do, you also do and greater than this. This is legacy. It's beautiful. And I realize that whenever there's a mentoring situation, mentor, protege, or that, that kind of thing, there are a lot of pitfalls. There are a lot of blind spots. There are a lot of disappointments. There are a lot of hurts. I've met a few young people who are just before today, I was in a conversation with one of my great friends uh, from somewhere in Africa, and he was talking about how these teachings that I've done has helped him in his church, how he had been able to draw. And we began to talk about our ancient times. You know, some of us are well dated like a calendar. And how, you know, some, some of the older people just had them. And he said, I remember you came to my city, and I came to your hotel, and you sat me down in the lobby, and you spoke to me, and he said, friend, be kind to the younger ones. Be nice to them. Raise them. Don't antagonize them. Because some of us were seriously antagonized. But thank God that we had a good, we, we had a, a, a good demeanor. We, we, had, we had good response to these things. We we're never bitter or angry. Because sometimes people only give from their own experience. Please note, wherever there's a mentoring and a, a mentor protege issue, sometimes things happen. Wherever there's a relationship, things happen. Because you realize that whenever there, there, there are two bodies in close proximity, there's friction. Friction brings heat. Heat brings fire. And fire becomes dangerous when it's not managed very well. Mentoring, protege relationships many times have ended in pain and disaster because of many factors that I don't want to get in. But in this episode, I just it's going to be a little bit rough, but please forgive me. It's going to be a little bit rough. I had, I had 20, about 22 things, but I'm going to do only five for the sake of our time here. And I call it are you a protege or a parasite? I'm saying that because some mentors have been par parasited upon and some, prote some mentors too have become very, very angry because of all of these things. Because anywhere there's a leader, like a business leader, church leader, political leader, people get attracted to them. And when people get attracted to a particular place, the good, the bad, the ugly, the in-between, they all come. People come with all kinds of agendas. I remember when the shepherd boy David became king and was anointed over all of Israel. The book tells me that people from all the tribes came to help him. And David went out with three questions. Number one, have you come peaceably? Number two, have you come to help me? And number three, or have you come to betray me into the hands of my enemies? David understood that there are people who will come to you to help you. There are other people who will come not to help but to hurt you. The others who come to betray you. He understood that. So he wanted to know before he committed himself to anything. So please, we want to learn today. And we are going to look at, are you a protege or a parasite? What is a parasite? Who is a parasite? What is a parasite? And please, after this, I don't want you to go calling anybody a parasite. Okay? A parasite, I mean, when you, if you've done biology... A parasite is an organism that lives on or in another organism, which is normally called the host. And this parasite, this organism, this parasitic organism derives benefits from the host without giving it anything back. So a parasite derives benefits from a host and gives nothing back. And normally the parasite ends up killing the host. When I was growing up, you know, my dad worked, worked with the, you know, the cocoa industry in Ghana. They, they, were, they were those that set up all this cocoa marketing and all these kinds of things. And during one of our vacation class, you know, we, we used to work, you know, the, and my, if my, I, when my dad said he was going to employ me in, the, in, in, in his organization, I, I was so excited. You know, I saw myself sitting in an office with a nice desk, you know, a ceiling fan, you know, no air conditioning, the ceiling fan, you know, looking through the windows, being nice. Uh, until the day came and my dad said, well, you've got to wear working clothing because you're going to the farm. You are joining the laborers to go farm. Oh, MG. Well, I did that and I thank God my dad subjected me to that because I learned. Listen, let me tell you something. 
If you are a business person or a pastor, whatever leader, and you want to know what is going on in your organization, go to the floor. That is where your redeeming value is. Do not be detached. It was Chairman Mao in the Russian Revolution, I mean the Chinese, the, 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 the Chinese Revolution. He said, go to the people, be with them, stay with them, know them. You've got to do that. Don't detach yourself from the people you are leading. Many, many, many times presidents and prime ministers get deposed in, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't subscribe to these things, but because they lose touch with the people. So I was sent to go to the farm, you know, and one of our assignments was to look out for parasites. In, among the cocoa plantations and destroy them. Because what happened was that these parasites will grow along the cocoa, tree, the cocoa tree and draw all the benefits. The tree would not yield, it would not be productive, it will die, and in the end, nothing is gone out. So what we do is that we we'll give him machetes, we just have to deal with the parasites. You know, I got some few blisters to show, but we had to deal with them. And after that, we use some chemicals. I don't know if you are old enough to remember something called Gamalin 20. We use that to kill, you know, the parasites so that they do not destroy the cocoa trees. And many times, ladies and gentlemen, things happen in mentoring situations. And so in this few minutes, it's going to be an assessment test on how you can relate to a mentor. It's going to be an introspection to see which part of the divide you may be in. Because if you are not a protege, let me submit to you, you are a parasite. And my burden is to help you position yourself right so that you can gain access and have benefits from a mentor. I've said it many times that mentors are not exactly stupid. I've told you that people who have worked in the wisdom and dignity of years may not speak, but they are not stupid. And so when you have an agenda, they know. They may play you, but you be careful. So because of time constraints and what we want to do, we want to get straight, I want to give you just five, five contrasts to, to find out whether you are a protege or you are a parasite. Some things about a parasite. Claudia Ajua, Apia, God bless you. Rama Yosin, God richly bless you. Reverend Ignatius, all the way from Accra, Ghana. Reverend Ignatius, I hope you are doing very well. From the Republic of North Cross, Del Nicholson. Our billionaire, Mark Pesima, says, share. When you share, you become a billionaire like him. God richly bless you. Prophet Isaac Dodgy, Isaac, God bless you. And thank you for all the prayers. I'm truly, truly, truly appreciative. Daniel Aivo, God bless you. Man of God, you are, so, you are so kind. I thank you very, very, very much. Says that this message must go viral. Thank you. I, I, I totally agree with you. Let's do that. Let's do that. Who have we got here? Upper Daniel, thank you very much. Yes, Martin Bio says that mentors are definitely not stupid. He knows what he's talking about. Nana Morrison, cheers to God. Your program is amazing. Nana, God bless you. She's on IG. Please go there. Ransford, God bless you again. God bless you again. We have all manner of people here. God richly bless you. God bless you. And right on YouTube, we have our YouTube family. God richly bless you here too. Winnie Fred Apreku, God bless you. Gina Apia, thank you. Esther Opon, good evening to you, Esther. Eunice, God richly bless you. Yes. Eunice, are you a mentor and protege? Patrick Nanakwami, Hope Tuesday. God richly bless you. Arthur Richards, all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Expect success in Koyo. God richly bless you. Marie Peters. Good evening to you too. Yes. So I'm going to give you five quick things and I'm done. I'm going to get out of your way in about seven, seven, whatever minutes. Then we can, I'm going to bring the mentor and the, the protege. He's not a parasite. He is a protege for excellence. We're going to bring him here. But the first thing I learned is this, that the parasite wants what the mentor has earned, but is unwilling to pay the price to know what he has learned. A parasite wants what the mentor has earned, but so willing to pay the, the price to know what he has learned. Let me tell you something, young, young man, young woman. There's always a price to pay for success and greatness. One of them is pain. Leadership comes with pain. Pain without bitterness. Sometimes young ones, young, they don't realize that mentors, they get to where they get to sometimes through pain, rejection, embarrassment, sacrifice, serving. These are all things that make a man, make a woman to become very powerful. Unfortunately, parasites don't understand that. 
They want the shortcut. Just give it to me. Lay hands on me and give it. And sometimes I ask people, you want me to lay hands on you for an anointing? How about laying on the hands for my embarrassment? For my scandal? For my pain? For my misunderstanding? For my misrepresentation? Because it comes with a package. You can't, you can't take one and leave the other. The oil doesn't flow without fire. So please understand, if you are a, a protege, then the protege wants to learn what the mentor has learned in life. They want to find out that and understand that you cannot sit on the throne of Israel when you have not first been in the cave of Adullam. Never forget that. You can never be a good king if you have never served under a spear-throwing king and yet you didn't run away from the palace. So a parasite. So if you only want what your mentor has earned through pain and sacrifice and you don't want to pay the price, to know, go to your mentor, find out how can I learn? How did you get this? How did you do this? What are the sacrifices that you made? Not meeting somebody in the corridor after he or she has ministered and say, throw your towel over me and I'll get a double portion. Dream on, my friend, dream on. Number two, let me, let me, let me rush very quickly. A parasite is solely interested in what the mentor can do for them. That's all they want. A parasite is only there. They are looking for a mentor only because of what the mentor can do for them. Oh, how can he make me get a good reputation? Influence. I want to use their name. I know him. So you find a way to have a photograph with him and that is your calling card. Oh, I know him. We took a photo. It's he and me. Oh, he even laid hands on me. How some people are able to take very quick selfies without their hands when I'm laying hands on them just baffles me. This is an age of miracles. Miracles of biblical proportions. But some of us mentors are dated. You just need a connection. Listen, it's incredulous for you as a prodigy, I beg of, well, a prodigy, to go to a mentor and all you are looking for, can I have doors? Can I have doors? Can I, listen, go get yourself a cup and get a door. It's a wrong motive. It's a wrong motivation. And it's not going to happen. Hear me. You must not have a mentor with a sole idea of he will give me connections. He will give me door. That is where a lot of young people you get, you get hurt. I was in a meeting some other time. I had gone to ordain a pastor and I asked him to bring his friends and he gathered about 50 young pastors and I began to field questions and one of them was so offended and hurt and I've taken a, a lot of offering to so and so and I'll call him and he'll never, and that's so and so that he's talking about. Me, myself, sometimes it's very hard for me to get him. And I had to look at him in the eye. Why bought, I mean, I bought to have and I told him you are a fool. Sorry, I'm trying to learn English. I don't understand what a fool is, but I said you are a fool. I said, you think he's going to have time for that? Listen, you can't just buy your... offering seeds. Yes, they are good. But if that is your motivation, then ask, what is your motivation? Dogs play by sizes. You must start from somewhere. As I sit here, I cannot go straight to the Vatican and demand to see the Pope. Maybe I have to see a priest. Then the priest will, 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 will take me to a bishop. A bishop will introduce me to, to a, a, a cardinal or somewhere before I get to the Pope. There are level, there are graduations of life that you've got to do. You can't just fly just like that. You see, if you're a parasite, you are only in the relationship for what the mentor can do for you. And so when you don't get it, you get angry. But if you're a protege, then you are interested in what you can contribute to the mentor. That is how it works. You serve the person if you are able. You plant seeds, you give, yes, seeds, yes. You plant it, it helps. There's nothing more beautiful than sometimes moves the mentor than when they see an alert on their phone. Somebody has donated something. Cash is there. Sacrifice, be there. Number three, number three. The parasite wants the mentor to listen to them about their achievements all the time. Parasite is you go around the mentor, oh, I've done this, I've achieved that, I've done this, on and on. I think I've said it in several, several times. That you don't go to a mentor and continually rehearse the great exploits you've done, the great this, the great. No. Can you stop and listen? Because anytime you go to a mentor and you are continually talking about your achievements and this and I've done that and I've done that and I just had lunch with Gabriel and, and Joe Gabriel and, and, and Joe Michael, you know, he, he, he had to do the dishes and, you know, uh, come on. Come on, young man. Come on, young man. You can't do that. You don't go to a mentor. Listen, 
A mentor has what you don't have. Don't go lecture them. I think I've said it many, many times. Can you keep quiet already? I've told you, when I go among my mentors, I don't talk. I do not talk. I don't talk until I'm spoken to. I don't. I, keep, I, I just keep quiet and I just watch. So if you're a protege, a good one, then you want to listen to the mentor. Have a learning posture. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 2, you know, when his parents are taking him to Jerusalem, you know, during the bad Mizpah, and uh, they were going back and the parents had traveled for two days and they realized that the, the, young man, the, the young boy was not with them. They retraced their steps and they found him in the temple. When you read Luke chapter 2 verse 46, the Bible says that they found Jesus, they found the boy Jesus. You know, so it's so I, I, I'm wondering if they can put it out there for me, but if not, it's listen. So it was after three days they found him. That is Jesus in the temple. He was sitting in the midst of the teachers. Look at what he was doing. Both listening to them and asking questions. Now we are talking about the one who knew everything. The second person of the Trinity, God Almighty. Jesus, God in the flesh. He was not lecturing them. He was listening to them and he was asking them questions. Learning posture. Let, it be, let, let that be a clue for you. Number four, I'm about, I'm about to finish. The parasite, a parasite does not like correction and instruction. They only like credi credibility and celebration. If you hang around a mentor and you do not like to be corrected by them, you don't like to have instruction from them, but you only get happy when they give you credibility and celebration, you are, read my lips, a parasite. You are a parasite. Because I realize that many times these parasites go around mentors and they get angry and irritated when, when there's an attempt to correct them. But if you're a protege, you accept and you learn from the mentor's correction. I don't know if you have gotten to that place where sometimes you wish that somebody rebuked you. That was Absalom's undoing. Absalom was handsome. Absalom was amazing. Absalom was just that, that is boy, if you like. Anytime he cut his hair, women from all over came to look at it. He was just amazing. And Absalom died an ignoble death. His younger brother Adonijah now became father's favorite. And there's a very sad narrative about this boy. The Bible says that his father had never rebuked him before because he was the brother of Absalom. David doted on the boy. Never told him, why are you doing this? Never! And you know what happened? This young man betrayed his father when his father was old and set up a parallel government in the land because he hated correction. Nobody corrected him. Let me tell you something. If you don't learn correction in the hands of your mentors, you will learn correction in the hands of trouble. And if nobody can teach you anything, your only teacher will be pain. Never forget that. A parasite does not like correction. They only like credibility and celebration. And finally, or maybe not finally, this one, I'm going to say it in 30 seconds and I'm done. A parasite will embrace the mentor's enemies and still want to be in his inner circle. Hmm, this one is heavy. I know, I know there are other peripheries of others, so I'm not going to get into that because this needs, a, I wrote here in my notes, this needs a lot of wisdom. I'm listen, I'm not talking about just fighting all kinds of battles. I'm not talking about mindless battles that you just take sides and fight. But there's the necessity of using your brains to make some deductions because some people's fights are not your fight. Some people's offenses are not your fault. Don't get borrowed offense. But what I'm saying is, do you attend, do you ever attend a party that your father was never allowed to attend? Think about that. Sometimes you've got to draw lines. Sometimes the mentor may not expertly say some things to you. But let me teach you wisdom. Learn to hear what is not being said. Learn to hear what's not being said. I'll leave it at that. The last one, and this one is a proper last one. The parasite will leave the moment he or she thinks they have received from the mentor what they want. The moment they get what they want, 
out of the door. That's a parasite. Remember, they take they take from organism organism and give nothing back. Listen, when you have a mentor protege relationship, stick with it. It may not be forever, but let the relationship be there. Let the relationship grow. Jesus said to his apprentices, proteges, that I don't call you servants any longer, I call you friends. The relationship has graduated from that to another level. And he now is beginning to tell them secrets that we didn't have told them when they were younger in understanding. That is how it is like. So you don't just walk away and disappear and cut off your mentors because somehow you happen to have all that you have. I remember some years back, Oprah Winfrey was talking about a particular, a particular woman that they were preparing and mentoring to give her a slot. Before that, I'm sure all of you know Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil had been mentored for Oprah for eight years. They mentored this man quietly. They kept him under wraps until they unleashed this man. Now he has his own program, doing amazing, making millions. But he was mentored quietly by Oprah. Now, Oprah had another one, another, another protege called Iyala. You, I mean, I'll say it. You know that. Mentoring her gradually until Iyala, Iyala showed up. I think she gave her one time to, to come on her show. I don't know whatever she smoked. And then she went out and said, oh, she had a dream. And in the dream, she saw something being said to her, appointed time versus anointed time. I remember watching that. And told Oprah that well, Barbara, Barbara Waters had offered her a gig or something. And Oprah said, if, you, if God has given you a dream and not that I'm appointed, then who am I? Cut her loose, you go. It wasn't long that she was also let loose from there. What if she had stayed? What if she had connected? Only heavens know what Oprah would have made out of her. I, I, I suspect that maybe the Oprah Winfrey thing that she was doing on all these networks, she would have taken over. So please know this. Protegers take through it all and allow the relationship to evolve. I hope you are learning something. Listen, I'm going to talk to you again about, I'm going to put the, the flyer there, the ambassador, of, uh, uh, the, the flyer out there for ISI, whatever it is, please, let's do that. Let's do that. You may have lost a lot of physical because of what is You have lost everything. When the battle chooses you, God fights for you. It's with you and you will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. Thank you again. I hope I hope you didn't run away. Well, we, we didn't we didn't lose track, but um, we just wanted to prep ourselves and bring the new protege right here. He's a man that I so much love. Welcome tonight to Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope, ladies and gentlemen. Help me to welcome our one and only Emmanuel Amuzu of Blaze. Emmanuel, welcome to Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here as well. Are you excited and nervous at the same time? <laughs> very, very, very know, nervous. He gets nervous. He gets very, nervous. Last very week, Prince Casey of all people, the one who bullies me sometimes, he told me he's nervous. <laughs> and so that's fine. We are, we are good. We are good. We're going to have a good time. Just relax. We are just family. Hey, listen. Besides me, it's a man that has so much love. You know, we don't we don't always meet, but any time we meet, it's beautiful. Uh, being who I am, I, I have my finger on the pulse of what goes on in my city a little bit. And he's doing an amazing thing with the young people of this city. Let me tell you, sometimes we look far into the future and we are happy because we know our future is bright and our future is secure. Because of men like this, because of people like this who have committed themselves to, to do amazing things. Gather youth, young people by, by their hundreds or so, you know, nighttime prayer, mentoring, teaching relevant things. 
It's amazing that he's here. Emmanuel, welcome again. Please look in the camera and just tell us a little bit about yourself in just a minute or two. Just let us know who you are. Just introduce yourself to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Never thought in a million years that, you know, I'll be on this high and elevated platform. But um, thank God, thank God for my dad's doctor, you know, Frank, who's up here uh, for, for bringing me to this very um, place. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, so just like my name goes, I'm Emmanuel Amuzu and I'm the um, overseer for Blaze ATL. Basically what we do is that we create a platform. It's, it's a non-denominational organization. What we do, we've created a platform for youth and the young adults to be able to express themselves. Um, and also in the context of that, we realize that most of those youth and young adults actually come from churches. So what we've done as well is to be able to bring their leadership you know, the uh, youth leaders or young adults leaders to be able to bring them on the same platform to, you know, share the experience and be able to pour into them. And I, I think one of the things that we are also doing is to bring up the fathers of the land. We've not got there yet because it's, you know, it's on a small <laughs> scale. So, so, but we're getting that that's one of the things we cannot do without the fathers of the land. And we're looking into, you know, um, getting the fathers of the land to come as well to point to us, um, and uh, you know my 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 um, uh, my my father, um, which which um, is um, Dr. Francis um, Kwanzaa as well. Um, I, I hail from his church as well, and uh, um, that's that's it basically, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much. Thank you so much. You know, um, normally when you are invited to places let's say like the White House or something, I'm sure they send the FBI or the Secret Service to kind of dig you a little bit, you know, and um, I remember asking, oh, Emmanuel, and one thing that was said about you that really blessed me were two things. Number one was your focus on this assignment that God has given to you because uh, one of the most difficult people to deal with are church people. You and I know that. Yes, sir. And especially to bring people from different churches yeah. to get together to do things. I'm part of it, so I know how difficult it is. I I, I, I do this leadership thing. I know how it is like. Yeah. Um, no hard feelings. It's okay. I think, I guess that is that is one of the downsides of things. But you've done very well with this. And stayed with. But the other thing that really touched me, people, was um, what was said about this man was the fact that... Um, in spite of all the successes that he's getting and everything, he's still strongly connected to his local church. Apostle Francis Kwanza, God richly bless you for raising this man and being there. We truly, truly, truly appreciate you and thank you for this great testimony that you are giving to many people. Listen, don't disconnect yourself from the things that made you great. And don't dishonor the doors that you walk through to get to where you ought to be. So we are here tonight and... Um, the great man has some few questions for me and maybe I'll, I'll also have counter questions because I'm a Ghanaian, you know, and the quintessential Ghanaian normally will answer questions with questions, you know. Uh, a Ghanaian went somebody and somebody asked him, hey, is it true that you Ghanaians answer questions with questions? And he said, who told you? So that, that is the thing. So let, let, let's get rolling. Emmanuel, I know you have some few questions. Let's let's look at them and let's try to fill them. So yes, let it roll. Let thank it you, roll. thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity to ask these questions and these are questions, um, most of these questions have been burning on my heart to, to, you know, to get an opportunity to ask leadership about. And thank God I have a platform today to ask. The first question is, why do leaders share more of their strengths than their challenges or weakness? Mm, this is a very powerful one. And I, I, think, it, I think mostly it is true. Um, I feel that leaders normally share a lot of their weakness. There are several reasons. Maybe number one, um, it could be it could be cultural. Because mm. I realized that the culture that I come from, people make leaders demigods. Oh, wow. And anytime a leader shows vulnerability, mm. sometimes he loses respect. He loses the sense of awe. That is the culture that I come from. And so people major in titles, major in detaching themselves from people, and all these trappings that make them look fearful. And so um, I, I remember one preacher telling me one time that 
the first day he shared with congregation that he had been sick, people actually walked up to him and said, you can't be saying these things to the church. How can you say you are sick? You know, and, and I, 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 said, I said to him, sometimes we, we, try to, we try to demonize these things, and especially a, a particular strand of the, the faith teaching that we, we, we teach, where we try to make it feel like if you are in faith, nothing wrong must come your way, nothing. You know, and, and much as our charismatic um, strand has done a lot of good, sometimes we haven't really balanced this thing very well. So in the light of that, I feel that leaders try to hide these things so that they will be credible, they will look amazing, they will look like these are something. And I remember talking with my wife today and I said, just look at the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 11. It's like bang in the middle. The Apostle Paul talks about it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen by by it, the, elders, the elders obtained a good report by faith. We understand that the, you know goes about uh, by faith, Abel by faith, this by faith, that by it goes on and then right in the middle, it looks like he changes direction, mm. and he says that some were destitute, some were naked, some walked in in places. He said others were sown asunder; they had no sure dwelling place. Others were touched, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. And he goes, says all of these things, all of these died in faith not having obtained a promise. And I realized that, man, then faith may not be just what we get, but faith sometimes is what we lose. Whew. Faith is not just what we get, but sometimes it takes faith to lose some things. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that leaders, mentors, um, we could do better with that, but sometimes it's cultural, sometimes it's our own theology that we have formed, that should look great. Um, I don't know what anybody thinks, Emmanuel, but I still believe that St. Paul the Apostle had serious health issues with his eyes mm -hmm. because he wrote and he told the people that if I know that if you could have taken your eyes and given them to me you would have done that he couldn't write his own letters yeah. and the first time he wrote by his own hand you know Tertius was a scribe all, all his letters were written by Tertius his scribe he talked about that but the only one that he himself he said you see how large handwritings I've used to write to you his eyesight was bad. But well, we don't talk about that. I hope it's okay. Yeah, you, I, and I, I said that because there was a day I was watching this preacher man that I really respect, and he said something, a challenge or a weakness was going through. And I, I was like, oh my goodness, the, I can identify with that. Yes. So if he's going through, or if he's gone through, then I can also go through. And I honestly gave me strength to fight through what I was going through as well. So thank you, thank you so much. Let, let, let me add this. One time, my mentor, mm -hmm. um, he's going to be with the Lord last, last year. He said to me, I think I've said it here some few weeks back that, he said, Frank, sometimes you lie to your, the people that follow you. And I was kind of sure, like me, lie, no. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, when you continually tell people about your strengths and your triumphs and without telling them about your trials and your tragedies, Ooh. you are lying to them. And so young people who are following you think that, oh, ministry leadership is all glossy, it's all beautiful. The most perfect man, the quintessential leader, he was man enough to show his cars to the disciples. Yeah. 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 So let's go ahead. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm excited here. I think the nervousness is coming down a little bit now. It comes down. <laughs> okay, so how should a prodigy trust that what he's being fed with is the gospel truth, since some mentors can come back to change their minds, even on a whole doctrine? Okay, um, I think basically you 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 have to understand that being a, being a, a, a prodigy also does not mean you are a clone. Who doesn't have a brain yeah. for your own, of yeah. your own? Yeah. And so you must make sure that you also go back to the scriptures and check things for yourself. You are not you are not somebody's echo who echoes a voice that has gone on already. Be very, very careful and understand that human beings can make mistakes. Human beings can go off. So stick with the word of God. And where you feel there are discrepancies, you may question, you may consult others, and then work your way through that. Other than that, you, you can easily be led into error. Mm. You can easily be led into error. Because sometimes people follow great leaders who have accomplished things, who've done things, and everything that they say, they take it as gospel. It's very dangerous. Mm. It is very, very... That is mm. why some court leaders, David Koresh, and, yeah. and all these people have led people, intelligent people, you know, accomplished people, 
to an untimely death. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you so much. Um, my third question is, what decision gave you the most success in your ministry or calling? Hmm. <laughs> what decision? A lot of them, but what decision? I'm trying to... What is Well, for me, the best decision I ever made was to give my life to the Lord Jesus, but I don't want it to be like that. <laughs> you know? So, let, let, I think... I think maybe it was relocation from Europe to America, one yeah. of them. Ooh. Relocation from Europe to America. Um, that place could have easily become my comfort zone mm. and yet could have become my graveyard, untimely graveyard. And it was not the easiest of decisions to make. Number one, I was 40-something, I think 41 or so. Uh, number two, I had a pregnant wife. Um, and number three, I had no money, as it were. Number four, I knew nobody in where at where I was going, but I took that risk because I, I consider myself. Well, I didn't consider myself. But I look back and I said, "What was I thinking?" Like a modern day Abraham, you know. The Bible says that by faith Abraham went out, not knowing where he was to go, and that. So I think that is what has given me the greatest satisfaction, and all because when I go back to Europe to London, my roots. I thank God for that place. It was a university for me. It was a learning situation for me. But I thank God I left. Wow. Location. Wow. I like that. Is everyone called to lead? Um, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I believe that everybody has leadership on the inside of him. Mm -hmm. But looking at where you are coming, maybe you are talking about like being in the limelight and whatever. And I think everybody has leadership on the inside of him. Okay. But we are all called into various levels and you no know, places, stages of leadership. Some are called to maybe lead a church. Uh, some are called to lead a business. Some, are, but there's we, leadership is influence, and we all influence. But you have to be very, very careful to understand your metron. That is your measure of of grace that is given to you to lead a particular thing. I, I, today, I was I think I was following a particular person in Africa. He was doing a Q and A, and somebody asked about. Um, is everybody called to lead, maybe plant a church or be an apostle or something? And uh, he gave a very good answer that uh, if God hasn't said that specifically, no, not that. Uh, because sometimes you are called to, to be in a, uh, in a second position, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, and, and my, mind began, my, mind, my mind began to work towards uh, Dr. Billy Graham. You know, mm -hmm. he had a team of five men, accomplished, PhDs, powerful. They banded together to form the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Uh, Billy was the one who was the preacher. They put him out there. They had Cliff Barrows. They have uh, Werner Becklin. They have Walter Smith. They had all these guys. You know, they banded together for over 60 years. Are they leaders? Leaders of the highest order. But they banded together under a leader for a mission to come to pass. So everybody is a leader one way or the other, but not everybody is called to lead some great things. Mm. Mm. Success. Everyone wants to be successful. Yeah. Unless there's something wrong with you. <laughs> How does success look like in ministry? <laughs> oh, Emmanuel, success to me is relative. Woo. Okay. For the blind man, success is sight. For the poor, success is having money. For the thirsty, success may be finding water in the desert. So it's kind of relative and uh, success comes with these dangers because when you get to the place where you feel i am successful you might be in trouble Ooh. so you got to be very very careful that what we consider success that doesn't get into your head for where i am coming from as a pastor as a preacher whatever for many of people around my area success is a big congregation mm. i don't subscribe to yeah. that i do not subscribe to that mm. um for somebody who's working of miracles I don't subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself testified that of all men that are born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. And yet the man didn't work one miracle. And mm -hmm. yet that man was successful. So for me, success in ministry and in life is hitting the mark, doing what you know you have been called to do with satisfaction. For me, that is success. Wow. I want to look in the camera and tell a pastor, a leader, listen, don't measure your success by how many people come to church on a Sunday. Don't measure your success by those little numbers on the left side of your live streaming. Don't. 
Because sometimes your success is that one man, one woman that you stop from committing suicide. Your success is in that person that you help them. Even though they were single parents, they, they, they got pregnant out, out of wedlock. They did some, and somehow you were there for them. Success may be paying that man's rent for that month when they were under. Success is standing in shoe leather every day and preaching the simple gospel to desperate people. For me, success is when somebody finds water in the desert and tells others. Success is when you as a beggar tells other beggars where to find bread. That is success. Woo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I need to go on. What's the most common mistake young people make when dealing with mentors? I think these are some of the things that I've talked about already. Yeah. Um, young people make, make some few mistakes. Like I said, sometimes the hidden agenda, you know, where they end up becoming parasites, mm. you know, when they rush. And another thing that I realized is impatience. You know, impatience. I, I realized, for, for example, my mentor, I think I've told a story here before, um, he, he was a man in high demand. And I realized that when I was trying to find him as a mentor, I, it was not lost on me that he might have other people that he was mentoring. So I had to be in a queue and take my time and work myself gradually until I got on his radar. But I realized that sometimes young people in situations like this dealing with mentors, um, they, they, are, they are impatient. Then another big one, another big one, is that one of the big mistakes I realized that protégés make when they are dealing with mentors in manual that they don't know how to handle confidential matters. Ooh. Because yeah. it's not everything that the mentor deals with you that is for public consumption. Mm. And when it happens, sometimes it happens only once and they cut you off. Mm. Mm. I'm a mentor. I have a little bit of notoriety amongst those of us who are a little bit gray-headed. And sometimes in conversations, it comes up. And I feel sorry when young men and young women, they are, some of them, their names come up that, no, you don't deal with such a person. We throw you under the bus. You say this, and it's not the best. So when a mentor um, trusts you and opens a door, be very careful. Impatience and learn to hold confidences. Not everything is for public consumption. Oof, that's good. Um, what's your criteria for selecting mentors? What's your criteria? <laughs> again, we've said it on this program again. For me, number one. You, you, if you are selecting a mentor, well, at least somebody who has what you, you are looking for. But the first one is character. The first one is char character before gift. Mm. Character before mm. gift. I've started a series in church called Leadership Assets. I started last Sunday, mm. and I used David as our quintessential leader from Psalm 70 and verse number 72. So, say that God took David from fully to shepherd the people of yeah. God. Number one, with integrity of heart, character, and then skillfulness of hands. Integrity of heart, skillfulness of your heart regulates your hand. So character for me is very, very, very character before gift. Because if you don't have character, then your gift can electrocute you. <laughs> character becomes your insulation. Yeah. Character brings longevity. Um I, the, the day I began to research and find out that sometimes highly gifted people don't last very long in ministry. I said I'll go for what makes people last in ministry, and that is character. So for me, I'll look, I'll look at character first, then I'll look at what, what do you have that I want mm. and how they can mm. help me. So mm. that is something we've got to look at. My character is very important. Thank you, thank you, Anel. Um, I have two more. Let's can go, go. Okay. let's go, let's okay. go. Please okay. indulge with us, let's have this, let's do that. What mistakes are church leaders making when it comes to mentoring young people? Um, what mistakes do church leaders do when they are mentoring young people? Sometimes I think they don't trust the young people enough that they'll be able to do what yeah. they should be able to do. Yeah. And so leaders hold on and hold on and hold on and sometimes they die with the button without passing it on. Allow the young people to make mistakes. Allow them sometimes to learn the hard way. Allow them to try it. And when they make that mistake, come alongside them, encourage them and correct them in love. I come from the old school where the elders always thought that we would never be able to make anything come out of our lives. And we were never given a chance. 
So we had to fight. Some of us are sitting here by trial and error. We had to fight our way through the jungle to get. But I see that we must give them chance. And today, one of the, I think I've done that in, 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 in our organization and I'm going to do that some more. And for every church leader listening to me, your church board, your leadership, team, whatever, whatever, begin to bring some of the young ones on board. Put them on your church board. Listen to what they think. Listen to what is happening. Yeah. Learn their language. Give them the opportunity. Because, Emmanuel, one of the main reasons for mentoring is this. Never forget this. That no leader lives forever. Yeah. Nobody is there for you. will not be a star forever. Some of us, when we came into town, we were like, the best thing that happened to Atlanta since Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> but other new kids came on the block. People with more swag are coming. Some of us are beginning to slow down. <laughs> but it's going to take you a lot of energy to energy. To, to slow down. But <laughs> you still have it. Yes. Yeah. So that, that, that is the thing. I feel that the mistake is that we are not... What is the point in calling the young people to come to the rehearsal all the time and never giving them a time to perform mm. on the stage? So give them the opportunity. Let them learn. So for me, that, that is it. Don't hold on to... Uh, <laughs> Your friend Prince will tell you that I say a lot that I don't want to be brought to church, people holding me, and I'm always dying, and they come and say, no, I don't want to do that. You know, what, what, I, I don't want to, I, I tell me, when I, I, I even want to die in swag. I, I say this to my, my, my wife and Sheila, I say, when, when I die, and I, you want to lay me instead of something, I want to die like this. <laughs> just, just like that. I mean, you say, the guy left in style. <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, but I'm, 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 I'm serious that we should give the young people the opportunity. Try them. Try them. Let them make their mistakes. They will surprise you. Yeah. They will surprise you what they know. They will, they will surprise you. Maybe a follow-up question with that, the part B of it. Do leaders think young ones are not ready to take battle? Yeah, I think I think a lot a lot of leaders think young young men, young the young ones are not ready to take the battle. Mm. But I believe that the young ones have been ready a long time ago. Mm. They've been ready a long time. It's only that we've not given them the opportunity to do things. To let them so for me my, my greatest joy is when i have to sit back and watch the younger generation do things oh man it, it just makes me sleep well yeah. when are they going to get ready when is the cut of time yeah when are, yeah. They, are they going to get ready yeah because when 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 you say when you want everything to be perfect because you are ready you are too late Ooh. you are too late i think that the young yeah. ones have they have been yeah. ready for a long time the only unfortunate thing for the young one is that some of us, the older ones too, we are still good. <laughs> still still we still have it. We still have it. We still have it. So it makes it hard. But yeah. I, I, for me, truthfully, I'm looking for the time where I can really, really... Today, I was in a conversation with one of the guys that, you know, we are good. Uh, I've mentored him, you know, since he was a teenager. Now he's doing amazing things in East Africa. One of them, we, we've been talking about, he wants to, me to come there. And, that, and he says, what? And I said, I turned 75 a few weeks ago, last month. I turned 75. I, I beg your pardon, I turned 65. For a minute, 65. I was like... <laughs> no, 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 please forgive me. Because I'm looking forward to that. But Amen. I turned 65 not too long ago, and I said, I really I'm, I really want to step back and create a vacuum around me mm. and let young ones feel that mm. with all that they have, their inadequacies, everything, so, so that I can go and do other things. I will never retire, but I will retire and go and do Ooh. other things. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. My very last question. Sure, let's do that, Emmanuel. What is an unexpected lesson you've ha you've learned from a prodigy? Unexpected lesson that I've learned from a prodigy. Uh, plenty of lessons that I've learned from a prodigy is that they also have things to teach the mentor. Mm -hmm. They have things to teach the mentor, mm -hmm. and some of us have, some of them have taught me lessons on on candor, lessons on 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 spirituality lessons on life that I may never have been exposed to. So some of my protégés have taught me life lessons mm. on resilience that I never thought they had. Some of them have gone through things that they, they never spoke about, they worked about, and they showed me these things, and it let me understand that you don't have to underrate the next generation. Wow. Yes. I'm done. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you so, so much, much, Emmanuel. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, that you have been blessed with this. God richly bless you. And uh, please don't go yet. I want to pray for you before you go. But listen, next week is Iron Shopping's Iron. I'm putting the flyer out there. It's going to be amazing. It's the flagship program for 
Frank Ofozoapia and Advanced Life Ministries. Listen, this is our 18th year. It is something that I have done as my contribution to the body of Christ. So please listen to me. Make time to invest. It's virtual and also in person. Virtual, like Dr. Chan, Samchan would say, in your room and actual in my room. Please, from all over the world, people are coming. The registration has gone up this year. We've had so much registration by now. We'll give you breakfast. We'll give you lunch. But more than that, we'll give you tools and keys to take with you into your next life. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. What brought you here may not be what will bring you there. Sometimes the only difference between the one who is here and the one who is stuck is the good information that they have. And these men and women who are joining us are coming with a lot of experience. They are coming with a lot of information to give to you and I. The greatest investment you can make is to spend a few dollars to make yourself better. I tell pastors and leaders all the time who come, especially the pastors, that listen, when you go to your church board and you tell them that every July I have to go to Atlanta, ISI, just to better myself, to be a better pastor. So please, can you set aside this little money so that every year you can sponsor me to go and they say no, fire them. Because you didn't ask for money for shoes. You didn't ask for money for anything. But to make yourself a better leader for them. Because when you get better, the things around you get better. So please come and let's do that. Then on Saturday morning, Youth on Fire with Zenzo Matoga is going to be amazing. Bring your youth. Let him set them on fire so that they can be better for you. Thank you again. And please, please, please hear me. Next week we are coming your way. I think I'm done with the mentor and protege. I'll come your way from next week. Another episode, but it's going to be good. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, all the way from our studios. This is your ambassador of hope, Frank Ofosuapia. Have a wonderful evening. I love you. Bye-bye.